So why does your car stall? You might have experienced stalling while running in stop start traffic. The car may just have cut out while you were driving along. So this video really is just to help you to diagnose the problem as quickly and efficiently as possible. We're going to run through the typical problem areas, starting with the most likely to the least likely. So hopefully you can track down the fault and you'll never struggle with that problem of the car suddenly letting you down when you most need to rely on it, particularly when driving in heavy traffic. So the first step in diagnosing a car that has stalled is reading off the error code. So the modern car computer keeps track of all the problems it's encountered and it will log those in a report that you can download through the OBD, the onboard diagnostic port using an OBD error code reader. These are relatively cheap to buy. They often work with your mobile phone. They use a Bluetooth connection. They're very simple to use to plug in to download the data and it just makes diagnosing a lot easier. If that's telling you that certain sensors or systems in the car are failing, you know straight away where to direct your efforts. So so it eliminates the whole guesswork and trial and error approach of fixing car problems that cause you to stall. So top of the tree really is the fuel system. So if the car is not getting enough fuel, it's going to cut out. So that may well happen when the car reaches a certain load point. So the fuel system is generally pressurized. There's some sort of fuel reservoir. There's a feeder pump going into that pressurized fuel system. So at certain points in the RPM range, it may be that the car needs much more fuel than you're supplying. So if it's not getting enough fuel, it's going to be forced to run lean and the car's computer is just going to shut things off to protect the engine from any potential problems or pitfalls that will happen. If you step too far out of those parameters with the fuel, you are going to experience stalling or cutting out. So it could be the fuel pump, it could be the fuel injectors. The most common thing though is the fuel filter. So just make sure that the fuel filter is not clogged and that the fuel can flow freely through that. The next most common problem is ignition systems. Obviously, diesel cars don't have these, but your gasoline or your petrol powered car will have an ignition system. A, a coil will supply sufficient voltage to jump the gap on the spark plug, and that initiates the burn cycle within the engine. So if that's not happening, if it's being mistimed, the car is going to cut out. So replacing the coils, the coil packs, the spark plugs is a common first step that people do. Don't dismiss the leads. It could well be the leads supplying current to that part of the car circuit. You will typically get some sort of report in the OBD codes that you've downloaded that would indicate there is an ignition problem with your car system. You can test your spark plugs as well and just make sure that they are giving you a decent spark just using a fairly cheap spark plug testing tool. So while we're talking about the ignition system, we also need to mention the car's electrical system. So cars have complex electronics lots of sensors. So broken wires, broken sensors can give faulty readings and anything outside of the norm for the car, it will cause the engine to shut down or run into limp home mode and that can cause the car to stall. The car's intake system, so we've said it needs fuel, it needs to match that fuel to air. So if there's a problem with the air supply going into the engine, that can cause the car to cut out. So typically with air and fuel supply problems, the car will start to splutter before it cuts out. It won't just suddenly cut out. The electrical problems tend to manifest themselves much more suddenly where the engine just cuts out. So check the air filter, make sure it's not dirty, it's not clogged. Often you get oil in the filter, particularly if you use one of those cone filters that's impregnated with oil. If your car's got an aggressive PCV system, or an EGR system that can also cause problems on the intake side. And also just carbon buildup on those valves can cause those breathing problems, restricting the airflow going into the engine. So if the mileage is up, you've got direct injection, it could well be a carbon buildup problem on the valve. So just removing the intake and using a boroscope just to inspect the valves, you can look in there in most engines fairly easily and just see if there's evidence of carbon building up on those valves. So if that's the case, a simple walnut clean, a walnut blast, there's various chemicals and solutions that you can use. You can't beat a good old fashioned bit of elbow grease scrubbing away at the carbon, but you don't really want all of those deposits going into the engine. So just make sure that the valves are closed 
closed when you clean them and that you get that area jetted out. A little blast from an air hose will blow out those pieces of carbon in there. Turn the engine slightly so the next cylinder you're working on has all the valves in the closed position. So if you've just run through water, that can cause serious problems within the engine, particularly if the engine has sucked in water. You shouldn't really take chances driving through water. If there's a risk that you're going to be driving through heavy water, get that speed down. You do not want to be sucking water into the engine because those pistons that are so good at compressing air cannot compress water. So the thing that gets compressed is the piston. So you will bend the piston, the rods more specifically, and cause damage to the crank. That will cause permanent damage to your engine and end up with a very, very costly repair. Neglecting maintenance can also cause the car to cut out. So if you've not been keeping on top of the car's maintenance schedule, the deterioration inside the engine may have caused excessive heat to build up, excessive wear and tear. It may have caused the engine to seize physically if you've really seriously neglected it. But generally speaking, a lot of stalling problems are, are down to driver error, particularly if you drive a manual, a stick a transmission, just misusing the clutch, mistiming the revs, the gear changes, getting that wrong can just cause the engine to cut out. The engine will not compensate for mistakes made by the driver if they're fairly serious mistakes. You often get away with it. So don't dismiss driver habits as well. Maybe you're just not giving the car enough revs. So get a friend to drive your car and see if they're having the same stalling problem. So it may just be a case of re-educating yourself with this specific car and clutch just to make sure that you are using it correctly to avoid stalling and you're giving it sufficient gas in order to pull away. I hope that this video has been useful to you. Please boot the like button. It really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. We don't want you to miss out on all the great content that we've got planned.